I love it when a plan comes together, which it didn't here at all. This character started off as a rainbow run, which means every difficulty with another elemental type of damage. Instead of my carefully planned out run, I got this one. So let's talk about it. This run started off by finding a unique club in the stony field, which is the fell oak. Unfortunately, it's ethereal, which means I can't use it. That is too bad, cause I would have loved the massive pile of resists on that. Especially while taking my pet reckon issue on his daily walk. Once I hit level 6, I go ahead and spec into holy fire, which is an aura that pings things in the vicinity for some fire damage and adds a bunch of fire damage to your attack. In the tower I get greeted at the door by the goat man and they end up almost taking me down. The tower farm is gonna be a pretty long one, we are going to need a tear and a rail rune for a leaf rune worth and a tal and an eth rune for a stealth. In the meanwhile I am also on the lookout for a 2 socket staff at Akara to make the leaf in. One of the big upsides of holy fire is that it kills tons of stuff you're not even interacting with and nets you a bunch more items and experience than usual, like this unique quilted armor that dropped in the tower level 5. Greyform is a very solid mercenary armor with its resistances and life leech. After all of that farming, the countess ends up dropping me a full stealth in a single run, cause of course she does. So I go ahead and make the stealth and the leaf. I don't think a lot of people are sleeping on this, but the plus 2 fire skills counts for all classes, not only for the sorceress, which seems to be a thing a lot of people think. So this makes for a very nice starting weapon for any fire build. And after all of that farming I go ahead and drop a lead crow, which is a crossbow and I wanted to try a ranger paladin. So in the span of act 1, I've already tossed out the first plan of being a zealot and farmed a leaf and then ignored it. Perfectly planned, great start. So now I'm a ranger and like every park ranger I have to call the overactive species, so I go ahead and take care of Andariel before picking up Hazard the mercenary. At level 19 I go ahead and imbue my boots to try and get the 20 faster run walk mod, but I end up getting a bunch of resistances instead. At this point of the run, holy fire is so powerful that the next couple of acts are completely free, with entire screens just dying at the sheer smell of my paladin. So I make my way past Duriel, make my way through act 3, ignore the fire immune witch doctor, and dealing with the council isn't much of a problem either, I 2 or 3 shot all of them. Dolls are extremely dangerous with holy fire active because they become ticking time bombs. I end up gambling a belt with faster hit recovery, cold and fire resist. In the Mephisto fight I have to make sure that I am close enough that Mephisto is always in range of the holy fire, because the damage from the crossbow is lackluster at best, but between kiting and the passage of time, Mephisto does end up going down. In act 4 I end up finding a magic ring with 27 lightning resist, which is an amazing find in the lead up to the Diablo fight. But before that I get an am rune from the Hellforge, which can be useful for either an edge or a spirit depending on how I want to play this run. In the Chaos Sanctuary, Hazard deals with the fire immune Grand Vizier of Chaos, and I go ahead and snipe the Infector of Souls from the other side of the ledge. The Diablo fight is mostly a matter of dodging and returning fire when you get a clean shot. I try to keep him in the holy fire aura range as much as I can as well. All in all he doesn't end up being much of a problem, so I go ahead and save the barbarians. I also go and buy a 2 socket hunter bow from Charcy, and I use the odd rune I just got as the quest reward for saving the barbarians to make us ever. Compared to the lead crow we were just using, this thing shoots at the speed of light. The base damage is pretty low at 2 to 7, but all we are trying to do is hit things as fast as we can with the holy fire damage. A huge quality of life thing on this weapon is the 25% faster run walk, and it does have a bit of lightning damage. The ancients aren't much of a problem, holy fire kind of just makes normal completely free. They also just don't hit that hard, so Heogogar can just tank them for me. All I have to do is be in a range where the holy fire is sticking them down and I can shoot them, but they can't hurt me, which is about as easily said as done. 
Saving Anya gets you a class specific item. In the case of the Paladin, you get a shield. And of course, on the run where I am using a two handed weapon, I end up getting the 17 resist all with the amazing deflecting mod shield. Seriously, where was this on my rare only holy shock salad? Achmel the Cursed drops me a shale rune. And the bail fight is pretty easy, with Heoronga tanking and me just shooting at him. At this point I really had to decide on what I wanted to do with this run. Do I keep running holy fire? Do I pivot into another element? Cause I know holy fire is at the end of its ropes at this point. I will need either a lot of gear with plus the skills or a lot of other damage if I want to keep this going. I'm also starting to have more and more trouble with even basic survival. Who knew not getting a pile of resistances from a shield as the class that is built around having a shield is a bad thing. The run is more and more starting to become about kiting and letting the holy fire do its thing instead of actually shooting things cause I just can't take the heat I'm dishing out. One little problem with auto aim is that when you for instance try to save Cain and there are monsters around, your weapon will keep shooting instead of saving Cain. After clearing out all the monsters, I get the ok from my auto aim and get to save Cain. As a reward I get a nice fire and cold resistance ring. The rolls could have been a bit higher but I will gladly take this. With my new ring in tow I go and bind the counters to darkness for the am runes she can drop cause I need those to make a piece rune word. The plus 2 to amazon skills obviously isn't for us, but we are wearing this for the chance to proc a valkyrie. And seeing as how bad a job we were doing at being a tank ourselves, the timing to get access to her couldn't have been better. The cold resists and critical strike are also nice to have. To improve on resistances some more I also went and made a 3 socket helmet, but even with that there is definitely room for improvement. Luckily I end up finding a 15 resist all amulet in the jail level 3. The next piece of gear I want to find is an insight, which these days can be made in a bow. However, finding a 4 socket bow proved to be no easy task, so I spent a lot of time just picking up random ass bows and hoping for the best. Even though holy fire is starting to to struggle in Nightmare, it is still lit AF as the youth would say for the Andarial fight. So after some kiting and some shooting and some waiting for the holy fire to do its thing, Mama Smurf goes down. And look at that drop. See that giant sword over there. That is the best weapon in the game. Seriously. Let's look at some other weapons first. Coolwind's point has plus 1 to skills, and while it's not a high end weapon, you can definitely use it through normal or nightmare if you'd like. Spirit has plus 2 to skills and has cleared many a hell bail fight. I used two of these on my no vitality barb run the other day, so you know it's good. Heart of the Oak, a coveted rune word that is used on many endgame caster builds, has plus 3 to all skills as one of the most powerful mods on it. The rune word Obsession requires an ist rune and a rune most people have never never even seen drop and you have to be really awesome if you found two of them and all it grants is plus four to skills. The very rare high end unique Mang Song's lesson that some people have dedicated their life to finding that's a mere plus five to all skills. Enter Kinemas all. This sword has plus six to holy fire. Can you believe it? This has to be the best weapon in the game and we are going to damn well use it. So like I said at the start of the video sticking to your plan is for chumps. This is now a Kinemails all run. So what does this big ass sword look like? It's got a whopping 83 ED, 115 attack rating, some fire damage for flavor, 20 mana for god knows why, and what obviously has to be the best mod in the game. It has plus 6 to holy fire. It can't get more fire than that. It almost puts me up to 2k fire damage. The power is real. Because I am now no longer a ranger but have to go up close instead, I start putting the next points I have into zeal, mostly cause it gives me a way to attack and it also boosts my attack rating quite a bit, which I desperately need. With this newfound power comes great responsibility, but I head into act 2 anyway, where as is tradition, whenever I get new gear, I go ahead and almost die to the monsters not giving a shit about said new gear. The fight in the sewers to beat Radamond is also the place where for the first time in the game I start encountering lots and lots and lots of fire immunes. Unfortunately, this is a trend that won't stop and I will be encountering many more of them. The Valkyrie is doing a good job tanking and to reward her I go ahead and hire her some help. 
in the form of a Holy Freeze mercenary. And with the power of friendship, we take down Radamant and head into Act 2 proper. The Maggot Lair isn't too bad at all. The Holy Fire deals area of effect damage no matter how big the area is. And I can only deal with one enemy up close at a time anyway, so gameplay wise, nothing much changes here. And for the rest of Act 2, the Holy Fire Aura still does very well. But Zeal is not looking very impressive against Duriel. But besides my Paladin being just as slow as I am, the fight went fine. He ends up dropping me a unique ring, which is obviously going to be the Stone of Jordan I ordered earlier this week. So I go ahead and ID him, and it's a 12 star, so they obviously got my order wrong, but not by that much. 12 star is a very underrated ring, it still has 40 life, which is a punch, and it also has magic damage prevention and fire absorb. And while I don't think it's the best unique ring or anything, I do think it's quite underrated. Act 3 just goes the same as it did in normal. The holy fire aura still just pulls through here. In the flayer jungle, a unique build drops. It's a black leech blade, which is a weird name for a pole arm. Calling it a blade, but that aside. And just like the dwarf star, it is quite the underrated piece of gear. Life leech, chance to cast weaken and maximum damage based on the character level, all make this a nice mercenary weapon. Alhizir's gear is coming together great. Well, except for the helm, he should work on that. The council members in Nightmare aren't immune to fire, so they go down without a problem. Just like I will if I'm not careful in the Durans, it is once again time to go dancing with the dolls. Luckily, between my two seasoned companions, I can let the holy fire take them down from a distance while bravely cheering them on. During my stroll through the Durans, I end up finding a set belt, which turns out to be a Hawanans. Besides me thinking that if I ever have kids, I will trade away my firstborn for some cannot be frozen at this point, the Mephisto fight goes fine. Definitely starting to be a slow and steady kind of deal at this point though, which usually ends up happening much later, so that's very ominous. The outer steps turn out to be more of a two flights of stairs kind of situation instead of a steps. I am pushed back completely by the monsters and end up fighting them one by one on the stairs. I end up going back up the stairs to ask if Al Hizir can come out to play, which he is allowed to by his parents. And together we end up making it past the stairs. At this point of the run, things are starting to fall apart hard though. Holy Fire has fully lost its zing. So it's time to run around like a headless chicken and kite through everything while I think of a solution to my problems. At least my tanks are still working and the Hellforge nets me a co rune. So I follow that up by going back to the counters to farm a shale rune. And with my new runes combined, I go ahead and show the world my new everyday I'm hustling armor. The hustle rune world has my favorite mod of everything in the entire game. 65% faster run. If that doesn't make you happy, I don't know what does. It also does a few other things. It has 40% increased attack speed and 6 to evade. Some dexterity and a bit of all resistances. Honestly, this is probably the coolest thing Blizzard has added to the game since Resurrected. Well, coolest item at least, Terror Zones are amazing. The only downside is that I now have to go and switch armors around if I want the Valkyrie. Cause you can spawn her and then just take the armor off and the Valkyrie will stay. It was bugged where it wouldn't but luckily they fixed that. So we can keep being on this ride of the Valkyries. I also go ahead and put a socket into my sword. Cause everyone knows swords are much stronger with a giant hole in them. The Chaos Sanctuary is filled with piles of fire immunes. But the Valk and the Merc get through them together. The rest of the sanctuary is a massive slog, with every single fire immune forcing me to wait till the heat death of the universe to die. But besides taking forever, it all went pretty smooth. For the Diablo fight, I just walked up to him and did exactly what I'm supposed to do with an all. I poked some holes in him, while hoping I wouldn't get burned alive. And we had a few laughs, we had a few fights, we had a few close calls, and in the end, the demon died. Eldritch ended up dropping me another shale rune, which I promptly put it to my sword. But even with all the increased attack speed in the world, I couldn't deny that the damage was just unacceptably low at this point. It needs to go higher. But I also don't want to get rid of the best item in the game. I mean, where else am I going to find 22 mana? And well, plus 6 to my main skill, one of those is more important than the other. 
So I decide to start putting points into the synergy, cause while I don't want to change out of my weapon, I am very much looking to increase my damage. To do that, I started putting points into salvation after maxing out zeal. Wanting to do some crafting, I go ahead and gamble some amulets. However, I end up gambling an amulet of the whale, which is just straight better than the 31% MF amulet I'm wearing currently. So that is a nice little upgrade. Speaking about upgrading, to upgrade my sword, I need a soul rune. So I quickly give the countess an owl full time. Dear lord, that pun until she bears me her soul, and go ahead and upgrade my giant sword into a tusk sword. The requirements on this are extremely high, considering it's still nothing that special, but I practically doubled my physical damage output, which means I can now actually hurt a pack of butter, or swat a fly to death, which should make life a lot easier. Frozenstein knocks at my door to talk about the advantages of cannot be frozen, but the upgrade is actually doing some serious work and clearing them out without a problem. The safest thing to do however is still just running around while letting the holy fire do its thing. Luckily my kiting gets rewarded with a unique lance, which is the Spire of Honor, another fine mercenary weapon. It's very slow but deals a boatload of damage to compensate for that. And if I wasn't already on the Kinemans awful run, I would happily take this to be my lovely wedded weapon. I have to reset everything that is even close to a real mod on the ancients. Fire immune? Never gone happen. Cursed? Nope, gonna get right out of there. And once I do hit a set of mods that I like, I still end up having a very rough fight, running out of potions and having to bail. So this build is now at the point where it's struggling to beat the Nightmare Ancients. Man, this went from doing well to well doing this way too quickly. Next attempt, I basically get 3 non mods on them in the form of cold enchanted, teleportation and spectral hit. I also end up separating them fully this time, allowing for a couple of 2 on ones cause at this point I had already completely forgotten about the valkyrie. But down they go. I make my way to the worldstone keep by doing some serious running around and making sure everything stays in the range of the holy fire. I pushed a bit too hard against the minions of destruction while being cursed which almost cost me the run. And if you're thinking, man what are you complaining about, this doesn't look bad at all for players 8. This isn't on players 8, this is players 1. It's that bad. The great thing about holy fire during the bale fight is that it automatically gets rid of the festering appendages. The bad thing about holy fire during the bale fight is well, everything else. At this point the fire damage is starting to fall so deep and fast that it's looking like it's trying to find its long lost lava cousins under the ground. To try and improve on my situation, I go ahead and dive into the terror zones, which goes, not great. The close calls are coming in more and more frequent, and anyone who has ever played hardcore knows that if your run is going like this, you are going to have a bad time. But there is nothing else to do in this game, I can either give up or push on. So onward with the farming we go. We're looking to get levels, gear, attack rating, vitality, better equipment, charms, stats, another build, like I'll take anything. So to put it a bit more concise, things are not looking good currently. This character needs a lot of help. The good thing about Diablo 2 however, is that as long as you're killing things consistently and keep on playing, something will happen that will help you run out. By which I mean that you can find an item that will help you on your quest, like this Amrun a devil can drops me. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but it opens up the option of a duress if I want it, which would give me access to open wounds and crushing blow. But for now though, I'm sticking with my hustle, cause I'm enjoying the extra run walk speed. However, what I don't enjoy is this group of fanaticism archers, once they start shooting my life total, seems to doubt whether this is the real or if it's just fantasy. The second group of archers makes me realize that there is no escape from reality. And the next boss pack also makes me open my eyes, look up to the skies and see that I'm just a poor boy and I'm getting no sympathy. At this point my life total is easy come, easy go. A little high, a little low. Anyway, whatever spawns doesn't really matter to me, cause my life total is always going down. And with that ham fisted reference done, I realize that while I would love to wear a hustle or a duress in hell, my resistances are barely acceptable even if I'm wearing a smoke with a plus 50 to all of them. So that's what I end up doing instead, once again losing out on any form of reasonable damage 
and this time it's also costing me my ability to do some serious kiting because of the 65 run walk from the hustle no longer being my friend which i am sure will never be a problem at all ever i'm totally fine with it it's seriously it's fine it really shows that this is yet another blow to the amount of damage i deal Cause after the terror zones, I get into hell, and in there I go to the den of evil, for which I literally don't have the means to get through it. Oh dear, this is a problem. So after that snap back to reality, oh there goes rabbit, he jokes, but he won't give up that easily. For now though, he has to get back to the terror zones again and grind some more. I make a 3 topaz helm and start the grind, and even though I am struggling here as well, which is honestly pretty damn sad at this point, I do end up finding an ethereal 3 socket hyperion spear. I decide to make a malice in it for the mercenary. I also end up finding a unique battle belt, which is a snow clash, an amazing item for a blizzard sorceress, which I'm not. At level 75, I am done struggling in the terror zones and decide to go struggle in hell instead. I solve my problem of not being able to clear the den of evil by just not going in there and run like a bat out of hell throughout all of Act 1. This feels strangely familiar to me, it reminds me of my holy shock salad. I just hope it doesn't end in the same way. To make sure it doesn't, this time instead of forcing the situation and trying to run through, I decide to kite out as much as I can and clear the field before moving on. Once I see a clear escape, I decide to just bolt through. The jail is just the next in a long line of massive slog, even getting to a simple door is taking forever at this point. I just wondered to myself though, how could this be, I am wearing a plus 6 to skills weapon, I should be a destroyer god amongst men. Instead, my life total is going down as fast as my money's buying power. In the jail level 3, I open up a door and decide that I would have rather kept it closed and went another route instead. After passing them, I don't run into any problems anymore. Before hitting the door at level 4 of the catacombs. Here I end up having to lure away a bunch of zombies before making my way into the Antario fight. Which honestly went pretty well, I mean she is still basically just a grass pokemon cause fire is super effective on her. In act 2 everything that matters is fire immune so I just run through it. The maggot lair was a clear cut case of slow and steady wins the race. I didn't get into any real trouble but god damn if it didn't take forever to get through here. The Claw Viper Temple was the opposite, I took a ton of damage and had to save an exit cause I was just running too slow. I went ahead and finally did something about my lack of canopy frozen and made a hearth runeward, which has 5% maximum life, a ton of cold resist, cold absorb and cannot be frozen. With the power of being able to run without getting frozen, I make it to level 2, where I get to do the most satisfying thing I have ever done to Fangskin. I get to just stare at him so intently that he dies of fear. The Arcane Sanctuary is yet another slow and steady area. Every single fire immune was of course tedious, but I encountered multiple physical and fire immunes, which meant it was down to all his ear to take them out with his holy freeze damage, which went about as well as you'd expect it to go. But I'm never in any real danger and am able to pull through without too many issues. In the Tall Rush's tomb, I barely get away from some core bellies before seeing what is behind door number 2. It's certain death, so I go ahead and once again re-roll the game. The second time through I managed to make it to Duriel without problems, which surprised me as much as it did you. While the hell boss fights are usually pretty relaxing, this fight wasn't at all. My life total went very low very often. Even though this was a calculated risk, it still did not feel good at all. The fight also ended up taking forever cause Duriel's holy freeze messes with my zeal's attack speed, which already wasn't good to start. Combine that with him having a big life pool and a bit of fire resist and let's just say, Alizir and me were here for a while. The spider force started off fine but the game was not having it and started hitting me for 700 damage a pop for some reason, which sounds like a perfect moment for all his ear to solve, which he does without issues. 
in the spider cavern i end up boring the spiders to death my damage has been falling for a very long time but at this point it's just sad it's like an old grandfather reminding his grandkids that he used to do damage 50 acts ago instead of wasting everyone's time here i decide to lure them back and run around them steal the eye and be done with the place at this point though, the run is holding on by the slimmest of margins and the smallest of threats. There are just so many dangerous moments. Every single enemy at this point in the run has the potential to kill me and end it. Run into yet another wall in the Flayer Dungeon level 2. Which I managed to avoid by walking the long way around and grab the brain. Everyone who has ever played a hardcore character before knows how runs like this end up. At this point, this run has been hanging on by a thread for more than half the run. I make my way down from the Flayer Jungle Waypoint and get attacked by a boss pack of Flayers. I realize too late that they are cursed and I don't have the faster run walk from my hustle anymore. And that was that. Run over. It's been a long time since I've seen my companion, the Deeds of Valor screen, but I hadn't missed its company. So despite not getting to the end, I hope everyone enjoyed the run, and if you did, please consider subscribing, becoming a member or a patron, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye bye.